Okie dokie, let's see how this goes. Uh, are you missing some vowels there? What is the meaning of this? Uh -huh. Reduce bandwidth by removing all vowels. This isn't, what, like Hebrew? They don't write vowels, right? Or they might have like extra little... I think Arabic also. They have like extra little marks to denote which vowels. Um, okay. Send everything to the outbox except for vowels. Well, that should not be too hard because we already know subtracting a letter from itself will give us a zero. So, grab a thing from the inbox. Copy it to that letter. Uh, and we also need a counter. So, let's, let's not forget to init. Because we're going to need to start our counter at zero. Okay. Get letter. Um, compare with all of the vowels. So, we have letter. We're going to subtract uh, the letter from whatever is at address counter. If it's zero, that means it is a vowel, so we abandon. Uh, U vowel. And we just restart. Otherwise, consonant. Not constant, a consonant. Um, oops, I just accidentally slowed down my mouse speed. There we go. So we are going to, if it's, well, then we don't know if it's consonant. We just know it's not that vowel. So otherwise, we're going to bump this up, the counter. We're going to compare again. Uh, we're also going to need to check for nulls, uh, but restart here, compare. We're going to copy from letter again, so that's going to be kind of a duplicate for the first time around, but we're always going to grab letter compare it to whatever the counter is, bump the counter. If the counter is zero, then this is a consonant. Sorry, I missed that. Um, if the counter value, if, if the item, let's see, at the counter position is zero, then we have a consonant. And we can outbox it. Okay. Oops. So we initialize. We set the counter to zero. We get the letter. Copy it here. Grab it from there again. Subtract here. Here, 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 here. If any of those give us a zero, we're just abandoning. Otherwise, next and go through all of the vowels. If it's zero, if we hit this one, that means we've gone through all the vowels. It is not one of those vowels, so we can output it. Okay. Initialize the counter. Get an F. Check it from the A. Nope. Oops. Oh, no, that's fine. Check with the F. Nope. Check with the I and the F. I guess I, I don't need to grab that counter. Let's let's make this a little more efficient. Get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay, again. F I O U. Oops. Let's go back. So I did not want her to go there yet. Jump. Oh. If it is okay. Jump here. 
Where was my check? Where's my null check? Oh. Wait. Bump the counter. Oh. If that is zero... Is that what I'm missing? That's probably what I accidentally removed just now. Oh no! Okay. Once we're done, we need to move the letter to the outbox, not the zero. Okay, I'll slow this down so you can actually see it. Check in O and O. That's zero, so we're restarting. We're reinitializing. Go into the A. Let's skip the A. Oh, sorry. That's the the letter T. Check in against O. Now we're checking the, the T against the U. Check in the... That's a zero, so that's null terminated. We got the T. Throw that out there. I could make that more efficient by saying item at position CTR minus LTR. Uh, but, you know, what's done is done. C'est la vie. Tielestas la vive. Okay. Only a little more inefficient. Now, duplicate removal. Oh no! It's time to eliminate inefficiencies! Send everything from the inbox to the outbox unless you've seen the same value before. Discard any duplicates. Okay. So, from looking at the memory box, I'm assuming we're not going to have any more than 14 duplicates. So, we're going to grab that. Let's just say this is the, um... How do we want to do this? Let's say this is the address. Um, I'm thinking, like, this is the letter count that we've seen. Let's also... Nah, 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 nah. Okay. Init. Gotta keep it clean. We're gonna set, set this as zero. Just... That's our zero. We want to have access to zero at all times. Um, over here, let's have a letter count. So this will be the amount of single letters, not the duplicates that we found. So we're also going to copy that there. Okay. We're going to grab letter. And we're going to, let's see, copy it to the address here. If that address is, is zero, we're okay. But if it's not zero, <laughs> we need to compare to previous. trying to think this through. So if we had like B and C compared to B, B, C, E, B, C, E, B, so then um, you would say back, back, duplicate here. So maybe I wouldn't increment this letter count in that case, so we just overwrite it here. So if it's zero, that's our first letter, we have nothing to do, so we'll grab the next item. Otherwise, compare previous. Copy from... Okay, okay. We need a second letter count. My husband is laughing at me. Oh, my husband is laughing at the cat. Copy from 
letter count to here, bump it down. So we're comparing the previous. So copy our current letter, subtract it from the previous letter. If it's if it's zero, so same letter. Then we're going to ignore it. So we're not going to increment letter count in that case. I think we're okay just going back here. So we subtract. If it's not same letter, diff. We're going to continue bumping that, right? That. Bump that if... Okay, now we have to say if the address of that is negative. And at that case, we have not found a duplicate. And we can bump the letter count up. I'm thinking. And we can... Wait, did I... Where did I put the letter? Okay, wait. Copy from that and output it and then increment this and then repeat we do not want to initialize it we want to just keep it the next okay i don't know if this is correct we will try this out so initialize we have zero letters we're gonna put a b in there oop wait what okay no that was fine we have one letter, putting C here, we're going to compare C with B, it's unique, so we're going to grab C and put it out there. We have two letters now, we're going to store E, going to compare it to its previous one, so E, okay, we'll fast forward it to B. So we have a duplicate B. We're going to, we have three letters. We're going to put B here. Now we need to compare B with the previous. So compare B and E. Compare B and C. And then compare B and B. And we'll see if that worked out. It's zero, so it threw it away. Okay, good. So I think we're done here. I think that's taken care of the duplicates. Yay! Yay! Okay, I need to pause for just a second. Okay, I'm back. I just had to check. To see, it's like 10:45. My husband works tomorrow, and I have tomorrow off, so we'll see. I was seeing if you needed to go to sleep. <laughs> yes, it's getting drafty up here. Facilities management has been notified, but they're never gonna come fix it. Oh no, this looks more complicated. Each pair on the floor contains one data and two the address of another one of the pairs. A scrambled chain. Each thing in the inbox is an address of one of the pairs. Outbox the data for that pair, and also the data in all following pairs in the chain. 
The chain ends when you reach a negative address. Repeat until the inbox is empty. Okay, so get address. Um, the first address will be 23. We're going to grab. Oh, we need to store that somewhere. Um, let's just say this is our working address. Copy it here. We're going to grab the data being pointed to. Um, output that. Uh, bump our address. Grab the data at that address again. So this is the letter. Then this is the next address. Um, so we are, if that, wait, we need to check here if the next address is, no, 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 wait, 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 copy from the next address, that's going to be like this, oops, R13, if that's negative, the string is over. And then we restart. Okay. Otherwise, we start this process again. We have a new address. So we've copied like 13 into ADR. And then we will repeat this process. I think that's okay. I know I'm not like testing in bits, it's just kind of my brain trying to step through it as, oops, as you know, you do. Got 10, 10's the address, put it in there, grab the P. Next thing is the 20, 20 is a new address, grab the E, grab that negative one, it's a negative one, so we're done with the string, grab zero. A P. Grab 13. Grab number 3. I don't know what this is supposed to say. Okay, I think this works okay. My kitty cat wants attention. Hello, Pixel, the kitty cat. and we keep going and keep going. There we go. We did it! That was actually not so hard. Re-coordinator. We're getting very close, oh my god. Pawn to B6, and check, and mate. Yes, I won again. Do we have a 2D array this time? Because I don't think I've done this before. For each number in the inbox, or each number in the inbox is an address of a tile on the floor. Send to the outbox the coordinates of that tile, column first, row second. For example, an address of 6, which is this one here, oops, has a coordinate of 2, comma 1. You may ask your boss for more examples. Okay, I get that. don't really know what, let's see, get address, I guess we got column, this is, why is that a four? Oh, okay, no, like, this is the min, this is the max. Oh, wait, but we have a 15 down here. Wait, okay. What are we doing? What are we doing? 
We're gonna grab five. So we want to pass one one out. We have a, a zero and a four. This is the width of our thing. So maybe we can use these counters. But then I'm wondering what to do with this 15. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, we can do division and modulus to get the data, but I don't have those operators. So six, we have a width of four. Um, so if we did six divided by four as integer division, uh, we do that for a second. Six modulus four to get the values we need. But I, I don't even know how to start this right here. Because I'm thinking of counting. Okay, so I watched a little bit, like just the very beginning of a solution, and he was, yeah, also saying you have to do modulo and division, which we have not done the division part yet, so I, I would hope that there would be like a division problem ahead of time to kind of warm up for that, to kind of uh, expect that ahead of time. Man, okay. So, get number. Let's just kind of step through this. So we have a number. Let's think about like 11. That's going to be column. The x coordinate is going to be 3. The y coordinate is going to be 2. If we did, we have 4 as the width, so. Let's try 11 divided by 4. 4 goes in twice, and then that gives us 8. 11, 10, 9, 8, remainder 3. So that's how we get our, um, I guess, row and column here. So um, we're going to have to figure out how to do the division with our subtractions and, you know, basically do the inverse of our multiplication. However, I wish that there was a question ahead of this one, or a problem, a puzzle ahead of this one that would have let me warm up on the divisions. Okay, so we get a number. Let's copy it there for now. We have a number value. We're gonna need to run a division, so let's just think about... Um, to my four goes in zero times. Um, remainder two, <laughs> right? So that's row zero, column two. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. We have a number. We have two. We essentially want to. Maybe easier for me to think of if we started with a bigger number. Two. Oh, man. Uh. Let's see. Int division equals the row modulus equals the column. So if we have 
11 divided by 4. 11 minus 4, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. That would be one time it can divide. Then we go 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That's a second time it can divide. And then it can't divide that uh, fully that third time because we have 3. So we have 3 left over. So how many times can we subtract before we get to a negative value? So um, let's have a counter. I feel we I don't want to like use these memory spaces. Do I actually? No, we can use any memory space. It's fine. Number um, sub count, or let's say this is. Um, uh, I forgot the quotient, right? Is the quotient the whole number? <laughs> Or not quotient, quotient. Okay, we'll just say Q U O T I E N T. Okay, that's the quotient. So we have our width, that's how we're dividing it. Um, so, eh, eh. Copy from the number, subtract the width, um, let's say this is the, running division, like a running total but a running division. Copy that answer here. Um, Actually, let's copy that number to both of these places. So, if we get a negative value, we're done. If we do not, we are going to bump the counter, division counter, the amount of times we can divide, by one. So that'll be one time, two times, three times, and so on. So we'll increment that and then try the division again. Once we get a negative value, that means we have to think about our remainder. Okay, let's just test this out. Well, can I have a different number? Can I have a big number? Okay. Let's test that out to see if we get 2. So 10 minus 4 is uh, 6. Oops. Oops. I might need to move. Copy. We're initializing. So we're copy from here to the division counter. So this is just going to be 0. Um, let's check. 10 subtract that so we can do it once. Okay, let's try it again. 6 minus 4. We could do it twice. Now again, this should give us negative. And, um, okay, so then that's where we need to continue. Uh, it may be negative or zero. <coughs> um, well, if it's zero, then it divided evenly. Okay. So if we have a remainder, oops, such as well, I don't really need to do anything else for that, right? Uh, that's just our value. So I don't want to lose that. We, 
subtract the width. I guess that's just stored there. So the remainder is the column, right? And then for both of these, we need to output the, the row, which will be our, wait, our, our division counter. Okay, let's see, so 11. And we can't have it division divided yet. That works one time. We got a seven. Seven minus four is three, so that's not gonna divide evenly. Three minus four is negative one, so we're going to nope, no, nope, nope. I don't want you to do that. Shit, I I shouldn't have hit stop. I should have hit the other button. I don't want to. Give me 10. No, give me 10. Okay, that's a negative. I don't want that. Back, 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 back. So I want that too. What are you doing then? You're trying to subtract it again. And that's a negative. Ooh, okay. If it's negative... We're gonna do this. I guess we have to test our four divided by four now. Um, that was wrong. <laughs> I'm trying one thing at a time. Thirteen. Nine. Five, one, so we can divide evenly that. That's negative. Don't replace it. Okay, one. I really need to back up, like, what number I'm even working with, because I don't even... I mean, that seemed to work okay. Here, let me... Number. <laughs> Just as a this uh, because I like lose track of what we're even calculating. <laughs> okay, so it didn't work for when it was equal to, right? Let's just keep going. So nine is the value. Nine is going to be here. Uh, column x value one, y value two. One, two, okay. Seven. Checking that out. Oh, I guess I had that value down there. I just wasn't paying attention. Seven and four, three. Negative. So we got row three. No, column three, row one, okay. Now we have a number that's smaller. So we have one minus four is negative. So this is not the value I want, right? Was that supposed to work? I feel like I didn't program the logic in for that part. Sometimes you can write something that gives you the correct... Oh, okay, what went wrong here? Um, and it will, like, run a bunch of tests and be like, this only works 50% of the time. Okay, let's start over with this number. What was this? We got grabbed 8. Oh, this one divides evenly. So, 8, subtract 4. Oh, uh, okay, let's see if that works. I don't know what it's going to do with that 0. <laughs> We'll see. 
Okay, zero, zero, that's right. Haha, -ha, no! Okay, what was this value? Four divides equally. So, four is zero. Uh, so that, we do need a one value. Oops, okay. We need to account for that. So, if it is zero, we're not doing the same thing. We're not... If it's zero... Uh, we're gonna bump that counter up anyway. <laughs> um, and jump back here. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> that didn't work. Ah, uh, this is so messy now. Um, Okay. Grab the running division. So we have 4 minus 4 is going to be if it's 0 then there's no remainder. We're going to Why am I doing copy from 0? Let's bump up that counter and outbox that counter. Well, I don't have a... Ugh. Okay, well, let's see. No! Um... Let's go back. Okay, we got it. We have a 12, which will be... Zero here and three. So that divided evenly. We have a three. Ugh, ugh. No, give me some d evenly divisible. Twelve. So we're going to have. Sorry, I'm just like. Stepping through this. This is a tricky problem. <laughs> so we'll put 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So division goes up. We have 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Goes up to 2. 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Put 0 here. Increment that one more time. So we add a 3. And it is going to be row 3. Now this is 0. 0 is going to be the um, column. So we subtract. If the result is 0, there's no remainder. We don't necessarily want to bump that. But we're going to have... Um, column zero, right? And then output the row. Um, now I have to account also for four divided by four because if we get a four then we do want to bump that once. No, no. Oh, I'm getting so confused. <laughs> 12. Okay, we I we do need to bump that cuz it's not getting bumped enough. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm like holding my breath. Okay, I did it! Oh my god! <laughs> Abby, a lot easier in a different language. <laughs> oh man, sorting floor. This is the last one, right? We'll just go ahead and try it out. 
Hey, check out this new office. We really climbed the corporate ladder together. Thank you. My supervising skills are truly adequate. Okay. Oh no, what is this? For each zero terminated string in the out inbox, sort the contents of the string smallest first, biggest last, and put the results in the out box. Repeat for each string. What kind of code did you give me? Copy from 24. Copy to 20. Put that there. Okay, so it went ahead and made something to load the string for me. Okay. Cool. So this is load our string. Load. Oh no, my mouse sensitivity. Okay. Um, this is our letter count. This is our handy dandy zero. Um, so by the time we get here, string is loaded. And we need to sort. <laughs> Oh good. Sorting algorithms. My favorite. Not really. Uh, okay. So there are some different ones, but let's just kind of go with something simple, right? Um, so let's say we have 84, 17, 40. So 17 should be here, then 40, then 84. So we'll let's start with um, index i and index j. So let's copy zero to i and to j, and we'll bump j. So we'll start with j plus one, basically. Um, we will. Copy from whatever's that address, I. Subtract it from whatever's that address, J. Um, this is I minus J, right? I keep getting confused by this. If, uh, let's see i minus j is greater than or equal to zero, i minus j is less than zero. So if we want the smaller thing, so i is going to be, you know, the smaller index, um, Maybe I should subtract this the other way around. J minus I greater than or equal to zero. J minus, oops, I is less than zero. So in this case, the thing at the greater index is smaller. So swap. Uh, copy from I. We're gonna make a temp holder. Copy it there. Copy from J. Copy it to I. Copy from temp. Copy to J. <laughs> and then um, uh, J plus plus until the end, and then we'll increment I at the end. Uh, if if the item at position J is equal to zero, 
fancy. str at j is the null terminator. Then we bump up i, copy from i, and copy that to j, and bump that up. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is like... <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I need to test some stuff before I get this complex. So let's see what I have so far. That loads the screen. I wish I could kind of set breakpoints. <laughs> okay. So it's loaded. We have I0. Compare these, negative. So we need to swap those. 17 goes there. 84 goes there. Okay, good. Now we're going to test out with the next one, 40. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I want. What are you doing? Oh. Oh. What? Oh, well, there was nothing on the inside, so it just kind of continued anyway. Um, so we do the comparison again. Where do we start? Copy from I, compare. Uh, Oh, wait, no, this needs to be sooner. Copy from J, subtract I. If it's negative, then swap. Otherwise, we're fine. And we're gonna... At that point, go to the next J, right? Here's my bump J. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> uh, load it faster. Okay. I forgot the name of this sort. There's like shell sort, bubble sort, all that, but I can never like, the names aren't really descriptive enough to me to remember which is which from code perspective. Which I should know because I freaking teach data structures, but you know, when you're not actively teaching data structures, um, you don't think about it. Oh no, okay, yeah, we need to jump again. So we've incremented that. Uh, also if, oops. If the what is it? If the value let's just double check. If the value at i is zero, then we are um, out of letters. I think then it is sorted. Uh, so once we increment i we need to go back and start doing this stuff again. So I think we're good here. We're gonna just keep running this stuff. So negative 64, put that there, swap that stuff. Okay, now for the next, got 49, 31, those are fine. That's in a good order. That's a zero. Now we need to increment these. So zero, one, one, and two. Compare these two. Reorder those. I think this is good. That is now zero. This is a kind of not, um, 
efficient, because that's gonna just check that. Oh, no, 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 no. We do not want to swap those. Okay. Um... Where were we? Okay, we copied from I. If that is zero, then we're done. But really, if J is zero, then we're done. Because we've ran out of letters to continue going forward on, right? So, that swaps. Okay, zero. Okay, now we bump it, move it over here, bump it, zero, okay, okay, now we have to, wait, what are we outputting? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we're outputting in order, so output. This is not so bad, but you know, freaking, I've done stuff. Um, let's just then reuse this I, so copy from zero, put it here copy from the value here, output it, bump i, um, actually if this is zero, if we're terminating then we're done, done with that string. Um, otherwise, bump i, copy the next thingy from i, Output it, bump I, we're done, and then we go on to the next string. So, okay, we're just, we're gonna check it out, let's see. I've written a sorting algorithm. Do I earn a second computer science degree now? Is that working? C L O U D D goes yeah. Nice. Okay, I think we're good. I think I've finished the game. <laughs> and the only really tricky one was that array where I was like, wait a minute, I need modulus and division. Which I know those because I work with like 2D maps in games all the dang time. Uh, but it just threw me because I was like, I haven't done any division in this game yet. Now I'll buy it. I didn't do any of the side uh, puzzles, but it just kind of threw me off because that everything else has been kind of ramped up nicely. Um, I feel like this game is for programmers. I feel like if you're not a programmer, it might require too much weird thinking to uh, really enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know how you would even think about these things if you had not previously studied computer science. I don't know if it'd just be very trial and error until you kind of like figured out how these things do the things. Also, I did not implement a very efficient sorting algorithm. I don't care. Whatever. I hate sorting algorithms so much. <laughs> Wait, it loaded a zero at the end? What am I do- Oh no, this is gonna go forever. This is gonna output the wrong thing. Uh, no. Oh no. Did you literally- Here. I have to- Ah. Uh... Oh no, my mouse! I keep hitting the DPI buttons. Okay. I need to look at what these last items are. Because here, after torse- no, that's a zero, that's fine. Is it just not ending at the last terminating string? What's going on? A zero, and then we have a 77 and a zero. Why did that not complete properly last time? 
or was I not paying attention? I don't know. I mean, it does take a long time. <laughs> it's like literally the worst sorting algorithm, I think. It's just easy to implement because it's easy to think through. Maybe, maybe I was just still running through the sorting algorithm and it was really slow. Because <laughs> we have 10 characters. It needs to go up through I equals 8, basically. And then we have a 77. And I hope that it works for a one character thing, which it should. Shouldn't have any problem with that, I think. Oh uh, no, oh no! What if it's a one character string? They got me! Okay, freaking A. Okay, we have to count for one character strings. The string was loaded. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It takes so long to wait. Oh my gosh, okay. I is zero, J is zero, the J is one. Let's string is loaded. Okay, this is initialized. This is only happens once. So I'm going to look at whatever is at J. If it is zero we're outputting our shit. I think that's okay. This needs to go faster. <laughs> I'm gonna look up I th which sorting algorithm this is, because again, I just don't remember names. Inefficient sorting algorithms. Not BOGO sort, it's not that bad. Is shell sort the worst one? What is it? Uh, actually, let me go to the big O Chi Chi. Just look at this desktop here. Not quick sword. Yeah. It is selection sort. The the least good sort, I suppose. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, here comes that one character string. Oh my god. Number 27. set our variables. Now if item number zero is the terminator, then we're just gonna take that one number, put it in the output, then we're done, right? You're not gonna do n what are you doing? What are you no 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 don't Oh no. Okay, good. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're done. <laughs> it was see not not very efficient. But it's fine. In program, congratulations. Congratulations. You've really become an invaluable instruction follower. Yes, don't worry. Your job is safe. We've replaced you with this electric box. It's called a computer. 
It iterates through a list of simple instructions, called a program. It has a small amount of memory to store data while processing, like tiles on the floor. It has inputs. And outputs. Its simple instructions can be used to get room infinite combinations, to compute just about anything you can imagine. A truly efficient worker, that never sleeps. It's going to change everything. Please take your pills, and enjoy whatever it is you people do out there. Congratulations. The computers took my job. It's okay. Really, we should not have to work to survive. Oh. The revolution is happening. Are they fighting robots? They are fighting giant robots. Does that robot have a gun for a leg? I guess I'm done with my job. I'm old. I'm retiring. We did it. Oh no, Carol. I do really like this game. Linux port. Thanks for paying. Look, that wasn't very many credits. You too can make a game with five people. Just finish playing this game and you will be a computer scientist. There we go! We did it! Ah, I'm so happy. And there's a sequel. Sequel, 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 sequel. It's so good. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day or evening or whatever else. I'm gonna go hang out with some cats.